Nation, my name, ah, you guys know me as Agent Beamstar. Let's get rolling into the new. Let's get right into the news. There's a lot of stories today. Subscribe to the channel if y'all want to keep up with the news. <laughs> Let's get right into it. For our first story of the day, ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie 2K was on a stream with the one and only Chris Smoove, and they were dropping all kinds of gems about NBA 2K19. So, uh, in this brief little segment, I'm gonna break down all the important points as fast as I possibly can. One, it takes about 200,000 VC, or as Chris Move said, 190,000 VC to upgrade your player fully. So, the reports that 2K was gonna reduce microtransactions, obviously a lie. I called it out, knew it was gonna be a lie. But, from what it seems, it doesn't seem like the VC prices have went up, so that might be good news. Ronnie 2 k even said this on his live stream. Is that there's a lot of ways to get VC now. Yeah. They really like added a lot of ways and it's 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 gonna be pretty nice. Look, the, the whole so point, I'll, I, I'll be talking let, let about me that comment on sure. that because the whole point is we want people to play and engage the game. It's this this VC thing is about separating like people that are grinding versus people that are not. And that's what the objective was. Last year we got away from it a little bit, admittedly, especially early, then we fixed it. Um, so there's a lot to do and we want to engage you for playing the game. So you guys will see a lot of that. I think Ronnie thinks that the problem was fixed after they reduced the prices of some haircuts and some shoes and accessories. It wasn't. 2K is still probably the picture perfect definition of a pay to win game on top of the $60 price tag, on top of the fact that this year you have to pay $100 just so you can get the game four days early. So no one's even talking about that. Ronnie, I just want you to know the problem is not fixed. There's still a long way to go with microtransactions, but I guess the good news is, unlike every other 2K the past four or five years, it doesn't seem like it's gotten worse, but we'll have to wait and see to get some details on how much VC costs, how much packs cost, all of that good stuff. And and also if boosts are still in the game. Next up, uh, according to Ronnie2K and Chris Move, you can now change your jump shots and your clothing on the got next. So you don't have to walk all the way back to your my court or walk off the court and lose your streak just because you want to change your jump shot. Unfortunately, it seems like Road to 99 is making a return. The language Ronnie2K used, he was trying to dance around the subject to not make it obvious, but everybody in the chat made it clear and there was even some people on Twitter taking clips and showing like, oh, damn it, man, Road to 99 is back. There was even a point where I think it was Ronnie said something, or it might have been Chris Move. If you upgrade your player and you make a new player, you have to start from the beginning. So that's a lot like Road to, Road to 99, and it's very different from the rep system we had in 17, 16, and everything before that. Apparently, there's some massive Pro-Am news they're going to announce at the NBA 2K League Finals on Saturday. They didn't say what it was, but we could assume Private Pro-Am is going to be announced. We could assume new court design features are going to be announced that the NBA 2K League already had. And hopefully a whole host of other stuff. They're hyping it up like it's going to be something massive. Hopefully this is the first year where Madden, I mean not Madden, sorry. Don't care about Madden at all. Where Pro-Am gets a massive improvement and I'm hoping to see that. So this next bit is kind of funny. Apparently the character in the My Career Story is going to be nicknamed AI. I guess it's like a tribute to Allen Iverson because he was on the first four covers of NBA 2K. And so Chris Move loved the idea and he said, listen, why don't you guys do something like this for everyone's players so you can use their initials. So if my initials is... Uh, Agent Beamstar, you can call me AB. So the commentators use the words AB to reference me instead of those corny ass nicknames they give you. Chris Move was pushing this a lot on the stream, and uh, this is what Ronnie said. Of uh, the nicknames or the initials, there's not 50, they're getting on you for saying there's 52 combos of initials. What? That, that's, <laughs> that is what it is. No, that's true. I know, but <laughs> that's the math. On you for 26 times 2. Yeah. Is How is the defense? The so the defense. The defense is, uh, it's its definitely improved. I make myself ZZ. I put people to sleep, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the whole chat was roasting him. Obviously, there's way more than 52 combinations of different voiceovers that would have to be done if this feature or commentary package made it into the game. I just thought it was funny that Ronnie was horrible at math, and so did the rest of the chat. There was something interesting Ronnie2k said on stream. He said that park information and news comes last because it's quote unquote the biggest thing they have. So they're basically saying that park is again since and still the biggest game mode on NBA 2K. But more than that because it gets interesting. If park is the biggest thing they have and that's why they put it to last. They did drop the My Team trailer before the My Career trailer before the Pro-Am trailer. I don't know if they're going in that order. It might make sense because my GM, my league stuff is usually the first news 
to drop. But uh, I, I had this theory that maybe my career had more users than my team did, which I guess would make sense because you have to play through my career to get to the park and pro-am. But then wouldn't that make my career the biggest game mode and not park? Anyway, maybe it means nothing. Just thought it was interesting information because they usually don't release stats. And probably the last relevant and important thing Ronnie said on stream, he was playing with the crowd around him at the park and Ronnie2k made a statement as if he was surprised that there was an increased amount of latency and lag because he had a whole crowd around him. Now, I'm a YouTuber, I have to go through that every single time I play the game. And I thought it was hilarious that Ronnie was surprised. Like, now you know why I complain about latency and lag all the time is because when there's a whole row of people that for no reason are being loaded in, it's slowing my game down. And I don't care if they're all blurred out for all I care. I just want a good gaming experience. Ronnie was like, oh, those guys all have to be loaded in. He was, he was trying to calculate why he thought that there was a lot of latency in his game and lag. Welcome to my world, Ronnie, where the latency plagues you every game you play because there's always a crowd. For our next story of the day, Twitter is a weird place and Twitter and Instagram kind of got connected last night. Ronnie2k was on a mission. Apparently, Ronnie was on Instagram leaving comments under Instagram models uh, comment sections and he was basically asking them to look at their DMs because he wanted to invite them to an event. And uh, long story short, Davis got screenshots of this and posted it on Twitter. And that kind of started a whirlwind where some 2k YouTubers that weren't invited to the event we're like, yo, how are we not getting invited and we were uploading the game all year long and you're trying to holla at Summer Ray and these other Instagram models and like just basically, you get what I'm trying to say. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, I know that boy was going in saying like, you gotta invite people from the community. Even if it's not me, you gotta look around. Like, what's, what are you doing? I thought it was hilarious. Uh, I will tell you guys this though. I've been to enough events to know that. I'm, I'm be honest, it would be nice to have some females there. There's some events where it's just 100% guys. And so sometimes, and this has happened to me in specific events, companies will hire girls to just strike up random conversations. And it's so incredibly artificial that it just feels weird. I'm not talking to somebody that's being paid to just talk to me, right? That's a waste of my time when I could be talking to devs or other YouTubers or other actual human beings at the event, whether it's reporters or writers, whatever the case is. Anyway, I thought that was funny. For our next story of the day, this story is gonna make you laugh. So the Blazers 5 Gaming were playing in their first game of the NBA 2K League playoffs last week. And in true 2K fashion, uh, they lost the game in a pretty heartbreaking way. Roll it. You get the stop, you get a score. We got a guy in chat. You, you, you couldn't ask for a more gut-wrenching but hilarious, as long as it didn't happen to me, way. There's $300,000 on the line in these playoffs and the Blazers 5 Gaming had some of the most unfortunate luck you could possibly think of. They were the top seed going into it, and a lot of people assumed they were gonna cruise their way to the NBA 2K League Finals. So, I, I guess shit happens, it's 2K, you roll the dice sometimes and it doesn't land your way. I thought it was funny. For our next story of the day, NBA 2K19's ESRB rating came back. Now, I'm sure you guys have been to a GameStop before. You're like, yo, can I buy a game? He's like, this game? You mean this game right here, that's M for Mature? No, bitch, because you're 17. And you're like, really, dude? Like, come on, man. So, you know that rating, the one I'm talking about? Some people tweeted at me, said, yo, 2K's ESRB rating is gonna be E for everyone, so that means that there's no proximity check. Now, on a past drama alert, you guys saw that Mike Wang replied to me, kind of poking fun and joking at that classroom video I made, saying, yo, we got to add proximity check. And since then, I was like, yo, maybe Mike Wang was been with the shits? and they're gonna add proximity chat to the game. So someone basically tweeted at me and said, Agent ESRB's rating is on 19 is E for everyone, which means your proximity chat ain't there. And I had to do some research and investigative analysis online. Apparently, online interactions aren't rated on ESRB. And uh, thank the Lord, because I was like, wow, it would have been the greatest feature to add. Hope is still alive for proximity chat, because apparently the ESRB rating does not take that into account. Because if you think about it, if they took it into account, that means they would also take into account voice chat. And uh, you know how people are on voice chat sometimes, right? For our next story of the day, things keep rolling. Ronnie2k was taking shots at EA and things got pretty interesting. So Ronnie took this photo here with Quavo and left the caption, we not trying to do what everybody else is doing. He sent an ad to Quavo, hashtag NBA2k19. Basically everyone's like, yo, they might be taking some soundtrack shots. 
at our neighbors over there. You know those NBA Live guys over there? <laughs> Apparently, an NBA Live dev wasn't messing with it because she replied on Twitter. She didn't reply, but she put out her own tweet throwing some shade. She said this. She actually deleted it, so I couldn't get the zoomed in version of it, but she basically put up this gif and said, I see dead people. And Brian Mazik, a writer for Forbes, covers all kinds of NBA 2K League and NBA 2K stuff. Hashtag shots fired on the quote tweet. Now, a lot of people didn't get a chance to see the tweet, but Brian Mazik was paying attention. She replied to Brian and said, lol, nah, but let me delete it before it becomes a story. <laughs> it's already become a story, ladies and gentlemen. Brian Mazik replied, lol, you know what you meant. That was good stuff. We haven't had a brand versus brand chat talk like ever. And then Colt, uh, big man for Kings Gaming, replied saying, I missed the tweet. Colt, man, I got you. Don't even worry. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I don't exactly know what kind of shots I see dead people is. I, until Brian Mazik said something, I don't even know this had anything related to do with any sort of shots at all. Uh, so honest, I don't really understand the shot whatsoever, which probably means it's a bad shot but I mean, maybe just, maybe I don't have the IQ for it. I don't know. For our final story of the day, I don't know why, guys, but apparently everybody's mad at Annoying TV. I don't know what he did. Shoot put out this tweet and said, all that money and still can't fix your teeth, bitch. Look straight out of a horror movie. Stop sneak dissing me and, okay, I can't. I need this video monetized, all right? I don't, listen, on the, a couple drama alerts ago, there was a couple other people taking shots at Annoying, and now it's shoot take, I don't I, I don't watch the stream to know like what he's saying about certain people, but apparently he's ruffling some feathers, man. And I know he's gonna be in New York, I'm gonna be in New York in a few days, so we'll link up and talk, man, but I felt like it was funny. Hey, shoot is always taking shots at, oh, you see what I did there? Oh, man. All right, anyway, this, this is a non-story, but I thought it was funny. Ladies and gentlemen, there was all kinds of other news that was announced, some information. For example, just because you have a pure archetype doesn't mean you have all the Hall of Fame badges anymore. And now, you don't even have to be a pure archetype to have some Hall of Fame badges. Zach Timmerman, a dev for NBA 2K, put out this tweet saying, every archetype has been rebuilt from badges to attribute towers. Skill gap is a top priority. He followed up saying, most dual archetypes have at least one Hall of Fame badge to clear things up. Almost 70% of them, approximately half of them, have more than one. So the shot creators you knew in 2K18 are gonna have different attributes and badges. They redesigned everything, and I like that they did that. I think that if 2K finds a way to create real balance in the game, it could be a lot of fun. I like the idea of restructuring it. I hope that they really tested this. They got some smart people in there that are good at the game to go in there and test it so we can get some real results. So far, Unlike any other year, like, they're, they're talking nice. If we haven't seen them make a push like this for a skills gap in any 2K ever. In 2K17, we heard the whole, like, skills matter thing. But they really only had a blog about that, detailing, like, we changed this and this and this, and they quickly reverted on all of that stuff. 2K, if you stick with the shits and you give us a game that has a skills gap that people have to work to be good at, not like you just pick up the sticks and it's the same thing as last year, super easy. I'm telling you, man, it's gonna change the course of history for NBA 2K, and I'm incredibly excited about it. Shout out to Zach and Baluba. It seems like, I hope they don't fall for the pressure, but it seems like they got things moving. That's all there is for the news today, ladies and gentlemen. Run through Mike Wang's Twitter if you guys wanna get some additional information. He's always out there tweeting. Uh, nothing that's of sincere importance. But I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and watch some of these drama alert videos I'm putting right here. I'm out. Peace.